When a mill receives a load of wheat, it must unload the car in a reasonable length of time or pay a fee called demurrage. For each day, the car cannot be used to carry more wheat or other produce. Like a railroad car that is not unloaded, idle money pays a demurrage in the form of lost interest. Not only does it not earn interest, it cannot be used by someone else to buy and sell. Once the wheat is delivered, it is stored for future use in an elevator, and the freight car is released to carry more wheat. When wheat is stored in an elevator for future use, we protect it from insect, rodent, and weather damage so that it will retain its value as food. When money is stored in a savings account or in government bonds, we expect it to be protected so that it will retain its value for the future purchase of the goods and services for which it was saved, such as the opening of one's own business, a vacation, or a new car. When the manager of an elevator does not protect the wheat from insects, rodents, or weather damage, he is like a government that does not protect the money in a savings account from price increases caused by creating too much money through too much deficit spending. When there are millions of people out of work and someone says we cannot afford to build a rapid rail system in a crowded city, he is expressing a lack of understanding of how a nation should use its money. If we have unemployment in a nation and there is work to be done, we are using our money unwisely. Money should be used productively for the greatest good of all the people. When a legislator says, our nation needs good teachers and educational equipment, but we cannot afford it, and then votes for non-productive and incentive-reducing government spending, he is voting to use the nation's money unwisely, which actually discourages many jobless people from ever seeking work. Remember that if some people are not working and producing, the nation's total wealth is diminished. If the nation needs to improve the education of its children, then voting for more teaching jobs and improved facilities and equipment would be of more value than voting for welfare and unemployment benefits. The falling prices and the Great Depression of the 1930s as well as the rapidly rising prices resulting from the inflation of the money supply in the 1970s stems from money ignorance on the part of bankers, business people, government representatives, the president, in fact, all of us. Money cannot be a dependable economic tool until we all understand where it comes from and how it should be used for the good of all the people, rich and poor alike. This lack of understanding has caused governments in many nations to create quagmires of inflation and unemployment that may lead to a money catastrophe, just as the reduction of the money supply in the 1920s led to the Great Depression of the 1930s in the United States. When nations create too much money, its citizens are robbed of their savings, thus destroying their incentive to save. When citizens save for a rainy day and their government creates too much money through deficit spending, it destroys the value of savings bonds, annuities, insurance policies, and pension funds. Let's review. Money is a medium of exchange. It enables us to exchange our labor and services for the products of the labor and services of others. It eliminates inefficient barter as a means of exchanging goods and services. Money is a standard of value. A scale measures weight in grams and kilograms, or in ounces and pounds. Money measures value in terms of dollars, marks, francs, lira, pounds, shekels, pesos, or any of a hundred other names for mediums of exchange known as money. Money is a storehouse of value. It makes it possible to save the value of what we sell for a later date. But herein lies its greatest weakness. If stored in the form of actual money, it cannot be used by others as a medium of exchange. To be efficient, money that is saved must be loaned to others at a rate of interest they can afford to pay. In other words, money cannot be both a storehouse of value and a medium of exchange at the exact same time. 
the coins and bills in your pocket act as a storehouse of value. When they are spent, they become a medium of exchange.